Hi, my name is Angus Dawson. And I'm Chris Bradley. We're both located in the Sydney office and are leaders in McKinsey's strategy practice. We're here to introduce our new framework, which is a practical tool to drive management conversations about the fuzzy and undefined topic of digital disruption. Our aim here is to put real structure and rigor into the conversations you're having on disruption and help you figure out what's hype and what's the reality that you really have to deal with. The framework's shaped like a hexagon, and let me help you decode that. In the same way that economics is about demand and supply, so is this framework. On the x-axis, we have demand on the left and supply on the right. And the top and the bottom of the framework are about change. The top represents a modest degree of change in the nature of supply and demand, and at the bottom, we see an extreme degree of change. Let's walk through each segment, and then we'll talk about how to use it as a whole. The first piece of the pie is understorting demand. Now that sounds complicated, but it just means that in the old analog world, we had less perfect matching of the product to what the customer wanted. A classic example is a newspaper with a business section, bundled with a lifestyle and fashion section, bundled with the crosswords. Not everyone wanted all those sections, but the economics of production made it convenient to bundle them through a common distribution network. But now we're seeing a perfection of matching demand. There are all sorts of ways you can address unmet or imperfect demand. You can discover new demand. You can unbundle it. You can tailor it. You can price much more accurately to value and use. You can take away subsidies. You can take away stickiness and you can make it now and easy. Just think now I can play a song from my Spotify account without having to go to a record store and buy the entire album. The next piece of the pie is new market making where we're finding new ways to connect supply and demand. Probably the simplest example is Uber, which is about finding cars that have a space and people that need a ride and matching them very fast. So what are the mechanisms that are going on here? Well, you've got matching, you've got exchanges, you've got standards, and you've got verification. All of these things become much easier and faster in the digital economy. Continuing our journey around the framework, we come to unconstraining supply. An example would be YouTube, where we found that there are millions of wannabe film producers out there. Or Airbnb, where everyone's spare bedroom can become a hotel room. Here you've got mechanisms like increasing utilisation or unlumping capacity. That's making capacity happen in smaller increments. And enlisting new supply into the market that was previously latent. Let's now go to the bottom half of the framework, where things get a little more extreme. Reimagining business systems. This means fundamentally changing the cost structure in the supply side by automating, by virtualizing, by disintermediating, or by becoming a lot more accurate and predictive. An example is Free Telecom in France, which has done away with all physical channels of distributing mobile phone packages. It has a wholly digital distribution model and a much simpler product set at a far lower cost. I'm going to skip across to the left hand side now and talk about new value propositions. This is about using digital technologies to fundamentally improve the value to the customer. For example, you can enrich your product with information. You can make the product social or you can make it a service. For example, Nike and John Deere have very successfully attached digital information rich services to their physical products. And let's end at the bottom on hyperscaling platforms. This is where we create entire new value chains or entire new ecosystems. Google is the most famous and obvious example. It has entirely redefined what it means to be a media company and entirely redefined the competitors that other players have to face. And the point of all this? By identifying the economic mechanisms of disruption, you're going to be better at not only explaining what's happening in your industry, but predicting and measuring your level of vulnerability and understanding where it's coming from. For example, if you cross-subsidise a lot of customers, if your customers have to buy the whole thing for the one bit they want, or if they can't get the product where and when they want it, you might be vulnerable to understorting demand. If you have high incidental cost, not directly tied to what customers value, a lot of waste from inaccuracy in the business system, or a process that can be fundamentally dephysicalized, then you might be vulnerable to reimagined business systems. Headline-grabbing cases like Uber or Google or Airbnb are fascinating. 
They really get your attention and make you wonder what's going to happen with digital disruption. This framework can help you make sense of these things, not just as random examples, but as very real, very practical economic phenomena playing out before your eyes. Some companies using this framework are going to come out of the discussion and say, hey, you know what, that was useful, but we've concluded we're not that vulnerable to disruption. For example, someone in mining might see huge opportunities from digital in terms of things like predictive maintenance, but they may not see that it's going to upset the fundamental characteristics of their industry. But other companies are going to conclude, you know what, we're at clear and present danger and we need to put our foot on the gas in terms of doing something about it. We hope that this framework will provoke a more rigorous discussion and really galvanise you to make the necessary big moves you're going to have to make.